Listening to the Coffee Hour, I'm Andy Bates. We have more to talk about here on the Coffee Hour today about an upcoming life affirming event. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin for supporting the Coffee Hour. Find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live Uncommon. Joining us today, Pastor Jeffrey Nairt of Our Redeemer Lutheran Church in Greenville, Illinois. Pastor Nairt, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it very much. Also joining us, Monica Shannon. She's life coordinator for the LCMS Southern Illinois District. Monica, thanks for joining us on the Coffee Hour. Thank you for having me. Well, Monica, share with us about your work as life coordinator for the LCMS Southern Illinois District. Well, thank you for this opportunity. Um, First of all, Andy, I have to be honest and tell you that I'm still figuring that one out. Um, It's new to me. I've been at it about 16 months, but I'm not at this alone. Uh, Our wonderful district and my district president, um, Timothy Shar, decided that whether this be whether this be a uh, instead of a one person job, we would create some type of a team. And so we have a team called the Advocates for Life for the Southern Illinois District. We're made up about, there's nine of us at this time on this team from different parts of the district, bringing different talents and resources. And um, we we are brand new, and we're working at bringing life issues to our churches, to our pastors, to our district. Um, and we want to be a resource, um, and that's what we're working on. So we're learning as we go. But right now, the big thing we have going on is that we're promoting uh, this prayer vigil that we have coming up. Um, this on the 20th of March. I'd love, it's not limited to the SID. We'd love anyone within the area to come join us. It's Saturday from 10 to 11, March 20th. It will be outside the gates of Planned Parenthood in Fairview Heights, Illinois. And we are having a um, chaplain-led prayer service. So we'll have three chaplains join us. Um, We'll have a leading lead chaplain, that is uh, Pastor um, Jeff Hemmer from Bethany and Fairview Heights. We will pray the litany, and we have the blessing of having St. Paul Hamill's Children Choir. They will come out, and they will help us sing through the hymns at this prayer vigil. So we're pretty excited about this, and we're praying that uh, the Lord will bless us with good weather and an opportunity for Lutherans to stand for life um, at this vigil. Sounds like a great event. And Pastor Nairt, why are life-affirming issues important for you? Well, the scripture tells us that we're knitted in the womb. We're formed in in most parts. And God's a creator of life. And he desires not only us to have life on this earth, but eternal life with him. And so life issues begin with God, and they end with God, and they continue with God in eternity. And there's so many people that have chosen to say, it's what I choose versus what God's Word says. And God's Word desires all people to not only have life on this earth, to have life eternity with him. Pastor, what is the the current state of life issues in Illinois? Well, uh, unfortunately, with some of the decisions that's been made, people can um, choose to end the life of a child pretty much when they want to. Um, Very few exceptions nowadays. And um, what we're trying to do with this prayer vigil is these people who have made choices that it's time for them to, for whatever reason, to to end this life that's in the womb, um, to give them an understanding that God wants them to, to have that child and that there's people that love and care for them through this time and um, a different choice of understanding how life is precious and that they're carrying life 
in their womb and that for those who have chosen to leave that life with uh, the um, clinics, um, that there's life with forgiveness for those who bear the, the guilt of that. And that's why it's so important that we stand and, and have this vigil for all people. Monica, anything to add to that? How life issues have have changed or, or what the, the state of life issues are in Illinois today? Yes. Well, in, in Illinois, back in 2019, over Memorial Weekend, um, our legislature met and passed a bill that is really ranked right up there in one of the most heinous abortion bills in the country. And because of that, um, we now have Planned Parenthood's built on four of our five borders where we're welcoming women from other states to come here and have their abortions. Andy, I'll never forget the day I crossed the river coming back from St. Louis to Illinois where I live, and the first sign that greeted me off the Poplar Street Bridge was, welcome to Illinois where you can still have a safe and legal abortion. Now, my my story is something that I've been asked to tell. Um, I always said I was pro-life. But I was pro-life with my mouth, kind of, and maybe my checkbook. But I didn't really activate myself to do anything pro-life. Um, so one day I was taking a water aerobics class at the Y, and it was a very politically charged group of ladies. And so I just kind of hang tight in the back row of my class and let them, you know, discuss the issues of the day. And very politically left of where Lutherans would find themselves on life issues. And suddenly the instructor just calls out my name and says, you know, Monica, what's your political persuasion? I was dumbfounded. And I said, well, I really don't have a political persuasion. I vote pro-life. And she told me she pitied me in front of the class. Well, you know, my face turned red. I actually wanted to go under the water for a while and hide. I didn't have I didn't have a response and that really bothered me. She followed me into the locker room and continued to tell me uh, why a woman had a right to abort her child and I was just unable to defend that. So as that bothered me more and more, what happened was is Planned Parenthood here in Fairview Heights, Heights Illinois was being built under the radar as a medical office building. They had already been zoned for that, so the city did not have to give them any new licensing. So a lot of the contractors who worked on that building were contractors who had no idea they were helping to build an abortion mill. And the final straw for me was my family's company worked on that building. And when they found out a week before it opened that they'd helped build an abortion mill, I can't even tell you the pall of heartbrokenness that came over our entire family to be involved in this. So I, I'm on the mission board for the district. In fact, it's what I'm involved in is campus ministry. I so happened to have a meeting that night, and before the meeting began at district office, we chat, and I told them about what I had found out that day before it ever even made the news that there was an abortion clinic being built in Fairby Heights, and everyone was, we were stunned. And so because I shut my mouth off, I got the job as life coordinator. <laughs> That's basically how it happened. I said, hey, we have a job for you. So um, that, that, uh, that activated me. And what I'd like to do is see Lutherans who, I just love being a Lutheran. How could you not love being a Lutheran? We are free to love and serve and advocate for our neighbors, right? I mean, we are, we are free to even mess it up if we don't do it right, because Christ is going to clean it all up for us through his work. And so um, as a life coordinator, I thought, what did it take to get me off the pew and, you know, out? And so we're looking for opportunities, touchstones for Lutherans to find ways to love and serve their neighbor. It doesn't necessarily have to be on the abortion front, but this is kind of right here in our district's face. You know, it's right here and it's close to the Synod. And it's something that um, that with the good people of 40 Days for Life who've been out there praying, Coalition for Life St. Louis, who has been the gatekeepers for years at St. Louis, and now they've come across the river to keep that gate. 
And what I mean by a gatekeeper is these are trained individuals who love life, who stand right outside those gates, and they advocate for that mother and that baby to try to stop them and encourage them to keep their child. And we've had, Coalition has had 307 turnarounds at the gate since um, Planned Parenthood in Fairview Heights opened in November 2019. And Andy, one thing that I didn't, and Sarah, one thing I didn't know is how much help there is out there for women who want to keep their babies. I had no idea. So we're learning about the pregnancy care centers that are there. Mosaic is right on spot. They are parked right there next to the fence. And so if a woman wants to turn around and go have a free ultrasound and see her baby or have a pregnancy test, it's done for free right there at the gates of Planned Parenthood. So those opportunities are there. So we want to get our churches to support the work of Coalition and Mosaic and a life network in the lower parts of our district, the southern parts. So as um, a life coordinator and as a team, what we feel like the best thing we can do for now is to get as much information as we can, you know, to our churches, to our pastors, to the people in the pew, and let them decide what fits their lives and their, their, their churches that they might go out and advocate, whatever that is, whether that's in a homeless shelter, whether that's for adoption, whether that's for people in the nursing homes. So, as you know, the spectrum of life issues um, is endless. Mm-hmm. We have more to talk about uh, with Reverend Jeffrey Nairt of our Redeemer Lutheran Church in Greenville, Illinois, and Monica Shannon, Life Coordinator of the LCMA Southern District, Southern Illinois District, after our break. You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Sarah Golseth. I'm Andy Bates. You're a miracle. You know that, right? A living, breathing, one-of-a-kind miracle. You were created to stand apart, to share your gifts in the service of others, to make an uncommon impact in a common world. And at Concordia University, it's our mission to help you do that, to live uncommon. To learn more about Concordia, go to cuw.edu. Welcome back to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. We are talking about life-affirming issues in the Southern Illinois District of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. An upcoming event we want to share with you. Joining us today, the Reverend Jeffrey Naird. He's pastor of Our Redeemer Lutheran Church in Greenville, Illinois. And Monica Shannon, she's a life coordinator for the LCMS Southern Illinois District. And... uh, before we went to break, we were talking about uh, both of your involvement, uh, both of you being involved in life-affirming uh, issues in the Southern Illinois District and and uh, what that means to you and why it's important uh, for us to continue this uh, pro-life message. What is, uh, what is the message of Lutherans regarding life, especially near places such as Planned Parenthood? Pastor? Well, um as as a Christian and as a Lutheran, we understand the Word of God is truth, and the Bible is very clear that God creates us, and He creates all life, and it should be treated with respect and understanding that is a gift. It's not something that we can just choose to disregard, and. So that life not only is precious from the time it's conceived in the womb, but it's precious throughout the whole walk of life, even until that time when a person takes their last breath. And so all life is precious, and it should be treated with the understanding that it's a gift from God. Mm-hmm. Monica, what do you have to add to what Pastor Nairt said? Well, I was looking at my meditation this morning from Psalm 82, 4. Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. Um, 
what is happening in our culture today in terms of the disregard for life has seemed in my lifetime to gone has gone very fast in the last five years. And I just feel that as or believe as Lutherans, we have such a beautiful message to share of Christ and Christ alone for the forgiveness of sins. So when we when we talk about life, we talk about life eternal, not just this earthly life. It's it's one thing and it's a good and laudable work to advocate for the life of the unborn and for their mother and for those who work in the industry. But it's another thing to tell them about Jesus. So we look we are looking and praying for opportunities that when we when we go out and do the work of our hands that God has put in front of us where whatever that is, wherever it is, whatever the location is, that God be praised and get all the glory that we would have the golden opportunity to tell people about Jesus. Um, and, and wouldn't it be a wonderful thing to not only see these babies be saved from this terrible, terrible hedonist death that awaits them inside of a Planned Parenthood to be brought to the waters of baptism and made God's own child. And so as Lutherans, that's what I think our that is our has to be our penultimate goal when we're helping anyone. We are called to love and serve our neighbor, to advocate for them. It's not a work. It's nothing that earns us anything in the sight of God. It's a gift and it's a blessing that we get to do it. And so as a life coordinator, what we're doing is we are trying to get out to our churches. We have about 94-ish, as you count them, in the Southern Illinois District. And when before COVID hit, we were going pretty strong, actually. We've been going out to the Winkles and meeting with the pastors, talking about issues with them, trying to learn what are concerns for them, definitely trying not to give them any more work, but to be a resource for them. We recently were able to speak to the Lutheran principals in our um, district and the principals conference and let them know that we have... Um, a woman on our um, our team who also has a life team at Good Shepherd in Collinsville, she is really working hard on putting together a program that we can get out to the churches so youth groups can use this to learn how to stand and advocate for life um, and even use the secular arguments, which sometimes you have to use with those who do not see the intrinsic value of human life. So, we're, we're busy. We're excited. We have, as a team, um, placed since we started about 12 articles in Lutheran Witness uh, with various writers who have written on different subjects, even, even as much as COVID, you know, adoption, fostering, uh, people with all kinds of challenges, um, end-of-life issues. And so it's, 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 it's wide and far. But what we want to do is we want to make it easy for people. We want to right now put events in front of people that they can plug into, that they can pray, or they can actually go and attend. And so that's our goal for the Southern Illinois Advocates uh, for Life team. And I couldn't do it without, the, without Pastor Narrant, because Pastor Narrant, I met him on a bus on the way to um, Washington, D.C. for the march, and I could tell you, after talking to this man, um, you, you, he's like he to me. He is like the, the go-to guy in our district when it, when it's talking about life issues. So he's been a real asset to me. And I'm going to thank you publicly for that, Pastor Marin. I really appreciate your support and your prayers every time we get a chance to talk. Thank you. Um, I think one of the things that a lot of people do not understand is that. Being a Lutheran and standing for life can be just as simple as going to a Planned Parenthood facility, such as in O'Fallon, parking your car and standing there and pray to God the Lord's Prayer, pray to God, care for the people that um, are standing along with you, pray that the Lord would touch these hearts and these people who have made choices that are not the proper choice and that those choices would be changed 
and that that child would be able to be brought to the waters of holy baptism. Praying at the Planned Parenthood facility is a huge part of being a Lutheran and caring for life. Monica, share with us about the upcoming life-affirming prayer vigil on March 20th. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, so the Southern Illinois District Advocates for Life are inviting all of the the district churches as well as anyone else who would like to attend a a prayer vigil at Planned Parenthood in Fairview Heights, Illinois. It's right on 64. You can see it as you go by. Uh, The address is 317 Salem Place. And there is parking at the building that's just just past, just east. It's called the Tucker Allen Building. And there's places to park. Coalition for Life is graciously going to open their offices. So if anyone needs to go in to get something to drink or go in to use the restroom or to go in to rest, there'll be a place for them. So we're asking people, we're going to start at 10, uh, and we're asking people to show up a little bit earlier we have a few gifts that we'd like to give away, um, some baby models, so people can see how how big is a baby at 10 weeks. It's pretty amazing. Baby's fingers and toes are farmed. Uh, there's there's uh, different things that we'll be doing at this event. So you can find us on the web at sidadvocatesforlife.com. We're also on Facebook. So if you look up Southern Illinois District Advocates for Life, you can get information there. And this will be uh, we're, this will be our second go at it, Andy. The first time we had Noah's flood, <laughs> so we so we are praying for good weather. But dis, despite the weather, not we will be there on Saturday, March twentieth, uh, at ten a.m. to pray together and um, and ask the Lord to intervene in the lives of of these young babies, these babies and their mothers. What are some of the uh, and- things that will be? Oh yes, go ahead, Pastor. I was just going to say, in the facility that we'll be at, we'll actually have their doors or their gates open, and there will be cars pulling in to to have an abortion. It won't be just us. It will be the actual Planned Parenthood in full swing, and that's why we are choosing to do it on a Saturday. And I do want to say this. It does happen to be the same time. The Senate is supporting life issues with their virtual conference, um, and we support that totally. And we understand people uh, will be on the virtual conference with life issues also. Yes. What is the it's, lineup? A, it's a good tandem event. What is the lineup for events for that morning? For, for us? Oh, yes. okay. So we, it, it is, it is just literally it is not just, it's an hour of prayer and we will pray the litany. We have various life prayers and hymns that we will sing together. Um, I, my team will have um, an order of worship that we will hand out there. Um, so we are coming most and foremost is, is to pray. That is what we are there for. Uh, there aren't, we're not having guest speakers and things like that because I want to tell you that 40 days for life, has been taking place out there. They are there. They've been in St. Louis every year, and they're out here in Fairview Heights. And there will be other groups, um, other individuals out there praying at the same time we will. Um, And they do that every day. That place is open from 7 to 7 a.m. So even even our Lutheran brothers and sisters in Christ can go on, go to 40 Days for Life, find the Fairview Heights location, and they can sign up for other days for prayer. So if this hour does not work for them and they want to come out during the week, in the morning, after work, for an hour or two to pray in front of Planned Parenthood, they have the opportunity to do that through the good people that are running the 40 Days for Life campaign. Again, where can we find the information, Monica, on the upcoming Life Affirming uh, Prayer Vigil? Yes, yes. We, you can find it on our website. It's SID, I'm sorry, excuse me, SID Advocates for life.com sid advocates for life.com there you'll see a flyer and from there you can get more information and contact me if you need a bit more about parking and information like that i welcome anyone who would like to contact me very good coming up saturday march 20th so not tomorrow a week from tomorrow saturday march 20th in fairview heights illinois 10 a.m to 11 a.m thank you so much for uh, for joining us on the coffee hour today monica shannon 
Thank you for this opportunity. Christ be with you. And also with you, Pastor Jeffrey Nair, our Redeemer Lutheran Church, Greenville, Illinois. Thanks for being our guest on the Coffee Hour. Thank you very much. Appreciate the opportunity to share life issues with you. You've been listening to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support the Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you anytime, anywhere.